Okay, uh, hi everybody from uh, all over the world who might be watching us. This is our very first uh, Lion Fight Zoom video interview. Uh, we're trying to keep everybody informed as to uh, what's going on with Lion Fight. Obviously, these are strange times. We've had uh, a couple of shows already postponed uh, and probably more dates will, will have to fall by the wayside. But we want to you know, get everybody back and, and you know, hearing what our fighters are up to and, and seeing what these guys are doing. Uh, so our very first one here, we're going to kick things off. We have, our, we're joined by uh, three of our best. Uh, we might as well start off in great style. So we have reigning world cruiserweight championship, Mariza Pollard. We have reigning cruiserweight North American champion, Joey George. And the very flashy, dynamic, up-and-coming welterweight, uh, Jake Peacock. So, um, you know, let's start with uh, our world championship. Uh, first question to you, and we're going to ask all three of the guys uh, these questions. Uh, but first for you, Chip, uh, tell us where you are and what you're doing to keep uh, physically fit and mentally sane during this uh, pandemic. Hi, I'm just here at home in Plymouth, Massachusetts, uh, chilling on my couch where I spend most of my time right now. <laughs> but uh I mean, I can just go with the flow. Uh, I got my, my little workout room put together in my basement over here that uh, I, that was probably the most productive thing I've done so far. And I'm not in it all that often, but I'm in it enough to, to stay sharp. I mean, I feel like I'm never out of shape or anything like that. Like, I'll go back to sparring, and the first night we were back at it, I guarantee you I'll be the only one that's still lasting after 10 rounds. But, uh, but yes, I mean – I go with the flow. I'm an easygoing guy. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just kind of enjoying being relaxed and not having to go to work in the morning or get up at any specific time or whatever. So, but no, I've been, uh, been got my, uh, my little, my little punching bag down here, a little wave master, like back in the karate days, uh, been doing that. It's kind of, I've made a little barbecue business for myself, and now I got uh, all my friends hitting me up for, for ribs and pulled pork and whatnot. So, I mean, it's, it's going good over here. I think there should be a rule instituted that if you're doing something like, you know, making ribs and, and pulled pork, that if you're, you know, there, there's four or five hundred guys on this call. I mean, you, you know, I'm sure you could dry ice a shipment to us. <laughs> I mean, I might start expanding. When, uh, who knows? I don't know. I think I found my uh, my post fight kind of career over here. Everybody's loving it. So. Uh, that's not here. I don't know. That might be <laughs> Canada. No, it's not here, so it's either got to be. It's got to be one. Of, Joey, is that, are they coming for you up in uh, up in Canada? No, I don't think so. It's, it's got to be Jake then. They're right. They're knocking at his door in Calgary. We're in the hood round here. <laughs> All right, Jake, so we're, we're with you then right now. Uh, I'm assuming you're in Calgary. And uh, what are you doing to, to keep uh, fit? I know you've been doing some videos. And then also mentally, are, are you like, binge watching? Are you reading books? What are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm staying, staying in shape, you know, working out, lifting some weights here and there, putting a little bit of size as uh, I think the next couple of guys I'll be fine be slightly bigger than me. Um, so putting on a little bit of size, staying fresh. I just started skipping, which is awesome. I just tried skipping for the first time, um, I think it was last week, and now I'm really getting the hang of it, which has been fantastic. So I, sometimes I skip for like an hour, just trying to get the hang of it. That's been fun. Shadow boxing, sorry, that was my dog. Shadow boxing, um, yeah, just staying fresh, uh, doing some videos, some publicity things. I'm working with Angel City Sports, which is like a, a sports community organization for athletes and individuals with missing limbs, war veterans, um, stuff like that. So I'm actually running like a online classes for them this coming Saturday, which will be interesting. And, uh, and then obviously we've got to keep things going with my gym, which has been closed down, right? And that's how I make money. Um, so we're, we're doing online classes like three times a week in that. So just staying pretty busy with that. And I just got a puppy. You know, I bought a puppy in the Great Depression. It's not probably not the smartest thing to do, but I mean, I have a lot of time to train her. So me and my wife have been spending a lot of time doing that. So me and my wife get lots of time together too. So it's been good. That's great. Uh, we'll go from, uh, I guess, Western Canada over to Eastern Canada. Joey, uh, whereabouts are you? I think probably somewhere around the Kitchener, Ontario area. 
in order you to and to uh, get yourself uh, physically keep yourself physically in shape and and also mentally uh, aware and and just you know keep yourself sane. Uh, I'm doing a lot of running. I'm running a lot. I got a gym kind of set up in my garage. I got a heavy bag and some mats. Uh, pretty much just running to keep me sane. I don't know if it's keeping me sane or not, but I'm I'm doing my best. I'm not used to sitting around a lot. I'm always kind of roaring, ready, ready to go, you know? Uh, it's kind of hard for me doing this, but I'm sure a lot of people have it worse in uh, other parts of the world, so. And you're, you're back to work now too, right? With your regular- uh, Yeah, I've just started working again, yeah. I'm a bricklayer, so uh, it's good for me to burn off some energy doing that. That's so. great. That's I got to get out there and work and burn off some steam, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, let's stick with Joey here for a minute and move on. Um, what do you miss the most about uh, like your regular training schedule? Um, I was wondering if it might be just the training, the physical um, activity itself. Is it the camaraderie with your teammates at the gym? What do you miss the most right now? Uh, I'm not really a social guy at the gym, so I definitely don't miss that. I go in, I got my hour and a half, two hour session, and then I'm usually just just uh, chomping at the bit, you know, like get my workout in. So um, I would say uh, training with my coach doing pads, okay. high pads were definitely my thing. Sparring too, sparring's pretty important for me. Those two, I would say tie pads and sparring. Everything else, basically, I'm doing myself, but, you know, I could be doing it all wrong, <laughs> you know? I got to – you don't know until you get in there and, and start sparring and get hit. You think you're doing everything right. Sometimes you think you're you're in great shape, phenomenal shape, and you don't know until you uh, get in and start doing rounds. I'm sure these guys will agree with me on that. All right, so let's go to Jake then. Jake, what do you um, – what is there anything in particular you're missing right now in terms of – training or just the people <clears throat> you have your own gym so is that sort of maybe that atmosphere that you may be longing definitely, for right now definitely yeah it's the team the team atmosphere you know coming into the gym getting working with my my training partners and my students um working with chris you know i think that's the biggest thing for sure obviously the sparring we spar you know quite a few rounds a week like 20 rounds a week 10 technical 10 hard miss that miss just the uh the competitive nature of it. Um, we're very competitive at this gym. So, yeah, I think it's the people, the atmosphere, the regular routine of, you know, training twice a day and, and then running as well. Like, all of those things put together is a bit of that. And you had a slight advantage maybe over the other two guys because you're one of the contracted fighters that has fought most recently. You just, you just fought. Sure, yeah, and really I just long. made it. I just made it. I couldn't believe it. I mean, March 8th was the fight, and I, I came back March 9th, and I think March 10th, Ireland shut down, and then March 11th, England shut down, and I was in England right before as well. So I, I escaped with the victory, and I escaped corona-free. <laughs> I, I, I'm winning, man. I'm winning. <laughs> Uh, Chip, uh, you have uh, a unique sort of circumstance, I think, too, with your training. You do a lot, um, I don't know if I maybe call it uh, solo training, but uh, a lot of times it's just you and, and maybe Risto doing your training, but then you also have a big team uh, with Mark and the rest of the guys. Yeah, I mean, I teach a few classes at a couple different gyms. Uh, I teach down in Cape Cod at Junico, so I teach some uh, Muay Thai classes down there, some boxing classes. Uh, then down at Boxing Strong here in Plymouth, I uh, teach Muay Thai classes down there. And then obviously up at Sea Tong, I get all my sparring. And uh, whenever I have a fight coming up, me and Mark Massey will be on the on the pads together and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, obviously I, I miss – why don't I miss clinching a lot? Because obviously, like, you can shadow box, you can set up stuff, but, like, you can't clinch. You can't clinch with, like <laughs> – you got to have another person to clinch. Uh, <laughs> and for me, especially, like, I'm always watching Muay Thai. I'm always, like, thinking about techniques, and I'm always, like, thinking about different things I want to try and different things I want to implement to my game and whatnot. 
and it's nice when I can just be like, oh, hey, you come here and I can I can practice this and or I can when we're sparring, I like to give myself certain things that like, OK, today I'm going to really try to work on this concept or this technique or something like that. And now it's like I have all these things in my head that I want to try on somebody and you can't do it. So unless I unless I'm like at market basket restocking on my ribs or something and somebody like it's a little too close to me. That's another story. I don't know. We'll see. But thus far, it hasn't happened. So. Okay. Uh, Jake, uh, let's start with you for the next one. Um, obviously, you know, you guys are, are so focused on, on Muay Thai and, and I'm sure you watch other combat sports. But is there uh, sports right now just in general or, or what is it that maybe you're missing? I know, uh, obviously, Joey, I know, is a hockey, is a hockey fan. Uh, it, Jake, I think you watched, uh, you know, soccer, European football. So, Jake, start with you. What, what kind of other sports are you missing? I honestly don't watch any other sports. Oh, Believe right. it or not, like even my dad playing for Chelsea and that, I never followed soccer, even uh, football in England. Um, I don't watch anything else. I just watch fighting. I watch kickboxing, Muay Thai. Um, I don't really watch MMA too much now and again. I do just because I have a few MMA fighters at the gym. Um, but I, I, I just watch kickboxing Muay Thai, so I miss kickboxing and Muay Thai. Don't miss anything else. <laughs> Joey, how about you? Are you missing uh, Stanley Cup hockey playoffs? It's kind of funny after hearing him say that. I don't watch any other sports either. <laughs> kickboxing or Muay Thai. I don't know. I uh, Hockey. I, I like hockey. I just don't watch it. <laughs> well, you, you, know? you guys have other things going on, right? More, uh, yeah. more focused. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chip, I know you're a bet. You enjoy basketball. Or have you been missing any, you know, chance to watch NBA playoffs or are you watching the Michael Jordan documentary? Yeah, you know, like these guys, I live in New England. I live in Massachusetts. The best sports town in the world is Boston. I mean, at least in the United States. But, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely missing basketball. Uh, the Celtics were doing great this year, and then the season kind of got cut short so I'm kind of not happy about that but I mean we'll see what what happens but uh they've been playing a lot of old stuff they've been playing a lot of uh like even old boxing matches on ESPN the other day so I was watching like Mike Tyson and and Hagler Hearns and all those old fights and whatnot which was cool uh they've been I, the Michael Jordan documentary like you uh I mean the the Bulls documentary mm-hmm. but uh I've been watching that that was cool but uh yeah, it's cool. They, they're just showing a lot of old stuff, a lot of classic stuff that you get to like go back and kind of relive again, especially here in New England when we win so much. <laughs> and everybody loves that you guys win so much. <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, we'll see about the Patriots this year. That's a whole other story, but I mean. Okay, so a couple of, a couple of questions coming up. Just, just short answers with these ones. Joey, uh, let's start with you. Um, where have you enjoyed fighting the most so far in terms of city or venue? And where would be like a dream uh, place for you to have a fight? Uh, well, I liked my last fight that I had at Foxwoods in Connecticut. That was great. <laughs> um, I'd like to fight in Las Vegas. Okay. I've never been there. I've never fought there. I would like to go and fight there. That would be a dream for me. Okay. Jake, you have had an opportunity now to fight a couple of times in Vegas. Uh, has that been your favorite location? And, and, or, or is there a, a location that uh, you kind of have a dream location to fight? Yeah, I mean, I love going to Vegas and fighting. It's been fantastic both times. Not only because of the winds, but just because of the whole atmosphere. Um, the venues both were amazing. The first venue was awesome. The joint was great. Um, and obviously just great experiences. So, yeah. Vegas, Vegas is fantastic to go back. I'd go back anytime, but I'd love to go to LA as well. So get me in LA. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's our man's hometown as well. We get it. We get uh, well, a we're, we're, we, that's a question coming up. So yeah, we, right. we, we'll get to that for sure. Right. Uh, I know the last couple of years, um, well, I guess maybe go back a little bit further. You had a lot of your initial fights with Lion Fight, obviously down the road from your hometown in, in Foxwoods. But over the last little while, you've had an opportunity to go to London, Los Angeles, and Vegas. Uh, are any of those your favorites, and is, or is there a dream location for a fight? I mean, I'll fight anywhere. I don't care where it is. Set up a ring, and whoever it is, I will fight 
anywhere, anybody, anytime. Hopefully sooner than later. But um, I love fighting in Foxwoods, obviously, just because, like, it's close to home. Everybody gets to come out. Um, always a good time. It's like, now what, since I fought there so often, it's like, it almost like it feels like home. Um, LA was a great time because all my family lives in LA. So that was the first time they ever got the uh, chance to come and see me fight live. So that was, that was an awesome time too, aside from the fact that it was outside in February and I couldn't feel my feet, but, um, yeah, hopefully next time if it's another outside one, it'll be in spring or summer, but, uh, Vegas, obviously, the last one was in Vegas. Um, like it's it's Vegas. I mean, every everybody wants to fight in Vegas. It's the fight capital of the world. Um, I mean, what more can you say? Especially being the main event, that was awesome uh, with the tough dude. But um, I would love to have us come to Boston because I mean, yeah. that that would be even more home for me than uh, than Boston is. But uh, I mean, they got the new casino up there. Who knows what the the deal is with with all the legal stuff but uh, i mean hopefully i'll keep my fingers crossed for uh, a boston card at some point i know steve walker would like to get on that too but... I, I think he would too yeah absolutely um jake let's go back to you for a couple of questions um one uh, was actually a question that i got asked i was asked to ask you this question uh, was there any other sport when you were a kid uh because of your uh, physical situation was there any other sport that you thought you should try or and maybe did or didn't or, or whatever kind of happened with that and was combat or was combat sport just you know what I, I can do this the way I am the way I'm built and I can do this well yeah I think I actually kind of stumbled on martial arts by chance because I was in every sport like I I swam competitively I played basketball in, in high school uh, I played American football, obviously played soccer growing up. Um, what other things? I can't think about the sports right now. Played lots of sports, lots of different sports and was on different teams for those sports. Uh, and then my mom put me in martial arts when I was seven. So I, all the time I was doing uh, karate at that point. And that was just what came so naturally to me. Um, it came more natural than anything else. And I'm fairly athletic all around, so I was decent across the board. But like, I just loved, I just loved martial arts. And then as I changed from sport karate to Kyokushin karate, then to boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, then it, I just loved that and just started pursuing that as I saw I was having success from it and being encouraged in that direction too. Okay, okay. And then you, you kind of mentioned uh, about a, a possibility for you down the road, uh, fighting in Los Angeles for a specific reason is uh, Josh Aragon is the North American welterweight champion. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, there's, we're, everybody's in a holding pattern right now, and, and you know, we're, we're kind of just waiting for the go-ahead. But what would that situation mean to you to, to be able to get that opportunity to fight, whether it's Josh or, you know, we had scheduled Will Romero to maybe fight uh, Josh, and, you know, depending on that outcome. But what would that opportunity mean to you to be able to have a shot at that line fight North American title? Oh, it'd be wonderful. I mean, I was watching Lion Fight years ago. Years. I, I mean, I just remember watching Lion Fight. I never thought I'd ever fight for Lion Fight. And at the time, I'd actually, I'd stopped fighting. and was towards the end of my amateur career. And, uh, I mean, it would be a dream. I'd love to fight for the North American uh, title for Lion Fight. And, uh, and Josh Arian's obviously a worthy opponent. He's been there for a while. Um, but I believe we've got the skill to beat him, for sure. Okay. All right. Let's go to Joey uh, as one of our uh, newer champions as well, the Lion Fight North American Cruiserweight champion. And uh, Joey, let's let's maybe take you back a little bit to uh, the, the fight when you won the title. You took the title from Brett Holacek at Foxwoods. Um, not, I don't think a lot of people knew who you were, obviously, when, when you initially got that, that opportunity to be the challenger. And maybe can you just talk about going through an unknown commodity to walking right into Foxwoods and, and taking apart the champion? Um, I, I definitely knew that, that I was unknown, that a lot of people didn't know who I was. And uh, I thought that I could use, I'd use that as an advantage because nobody really knew what that was going to bring. So, 
You know, I, I trained super hard. I was in excellent physical condition and I don't think, I don't know if Brett took, took me seriously. Um, you know, um, I don't think anyone had, uh, really thought, I don't think people thought that I was going to win, but I was there to win no matter what. Right. So yeah, I, I brought the fight to him for sure. Then you, you obviously had a fight scheduled for May uh, with Lion Fight. We were going to do a show down in, uh, in Texas that obviously got sidetracked uh, by, the, by the current situation. Um, so obviously, you know, you've got a title defense as soon as possible, uh, you know, we'll get that fight settled. But, I, and I may have heard this wrong, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relay a little story. And Chip's on this call, so he can, he can relay this story too. I'm, I think I had heard that when you beat Brett for the title, that Chip had said to you in the ring, I think you might be one of my next opponents. Uh, and I don't know if, if Chip uh, remembers that or if I got told the, the, the whole story or the correct story, but what would it mean for you, Joey, to maybe go have the title defense, be successful in North American title defense, and then wind up potentially fighting Chip Raza Pollard for a world title? Well, Chip's the best right now. He's undefeated, 12-0. and 0. I've been watching him for a while. I, I want to fight the best guys with the highest stakes. And, uh, yeah, like I, I'd be honored to, to have the chance to fight him down the road when I earn my, or earn my spot. Okay. And uh, I'd like to defend the, t the North American title, though, as soon as possible. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we, we had lined up, uh, you know, I don't think it's, it's obviously no secret to you. We had lined up a potential fight for you with, with Chris Trammell, and, and hopefully that fight still comes off uh, as soon as we can get back to business. And, uh, you know, if you're successful there, I, you know, I would think, what, maybe one more title defense after that, and then potentially have yourself lined up against Chip, but that, that would probably be a reasonable schedule for you. And then, uh, you know, we obviously Chip is on this call too. Chip, I, maybe you can tell me, was that story correctly relayed to me that you had told uh, Joey in the ring after he won the North American title that, that he might be one of your next uh, challenges? No. <laughs> I didn't say that. I remember I put, the, uh, I put the belt on Joey. I remember uh, I was in the, in the ring with, uh, with Scott Kent. And uh, I'm the one who put the belt on Joey. And obviously I, said, I probably said, like, oh, nice fight and everything like that. It was a great fight. It was uh, Brett's, I mean, I know firsthand Brett's a tough dude. I fought Brett too, my first fight, line fight. Um, but I don't think I said anything like, like I'm not going to try to steal his thunder or anything like that. Or, oh, I want you next. Or da, da, da. Like, no, I congratulated him on a, on a great fight. And I think we talked again afterwards. I think Joey was getting like a slice of pizza or something like that. I forget. But, uh, but yeah, no, nothing, nothing crazy. Just you know, just good fight. Okay, but, but don't you stick with that for a moment. You obviously watched the fight that night because it was at Foxwoods. You were there and sitting with Scott Kent watching that fight. What did you see from Joey George that you were like, hey, this guy's pretty darn good? I uh, just very strong, very aggressive. Um, with Brett, Brett's very tricky he's very uh he's a cagey fighter he likes to kind of like hang back and counter and and wait for you to kick him and like kind of sweep you and he's he's a he's muy familiar he's a very uh he's a very strategic fighter and uh joey did what he should have and he, he pushed the action he was just like kind of in joe uh in brett's face the whole time um very aggressive just very physical with them and that's like it was tough for, for Brett to deal with, especially like, I mean, I, I wasn't in Brett's like camp or anything like that. So I don't know what his shape was like. I don't know like what his gas tank was looking like, but towards the end, I feel like the, the pressure was probably wearing on him a little bit, but uh, still, still a great fight for both of them. Um, like I, I, I enjoyed watching it. I think everybody there did. They both had great moments. Obviously Joey got more great moments, but uh you know, came out with the win, but yeah, definitely a, a very impressive fight. Uh, enjoyed, enjoyed being there for it. Okay. 
Great. And, and maybe just stick with Chip for a minute here uh, in terms of your last uh, few fights. You've had some uh, pretty stiff challenges, Danny Forsberg, uh, Conjac. Uh, you know, how do you approach a fight? I know your, your nickname is the surgeon for a reason, your precision, and, and everybody says that about you, that you're just, it, you know, you're just such a precise fighter with everything that you do. But there's always been that kind of rub that, you know, people want to see you go for a big finish. How do you, in the middle of a fight or near the end of a fight, go, do I stick with what's working for me and being the surgeon and precise, or do I go, when do I go for it? When do I potentially look for, for a big finish? I mean, I'll never be the guy that's going to, like, throw caution to the wind or anything like that and just – spaz out and go crazy and try to knock somebody out like if the knockout comes it comes I mean there's definitely every fight I mean every time Carnage interviews me I'm always critical of my performance before I see it um, and then even when I watch my fights I, I, I see what I do wrong and I know what I can I mean not necessarily wrong but what I could do better um, and I, I see I see things that I can improve on no matter how dominant the victory was or whatever but um just like my last finish against um um what was his name uh, um remy remy yeah. remy Vecla. Yeah. yeah 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 um the finish just came like i just was chomping away at his leg and just methodically just kind of picking him apart and then he went down and didn't get back up so it's like i i'm, I'm definitely looking to not let it go to the judges. I like knocking people out. Everybody does. I like finishing people. I like putting on a show. But um, I mean, I, I play my game. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 my thing. I, I take you out of your game. I play my game. I look for your weaknesses. I slice you apart, and whatever happens, happens. Whether it's a, a five round win, a third round win, fourth round win, whatever. I mean, I'll take it. Uh, well, you discussing that, it's, it's interesting because uh, watching Jake's last few fights, it's like the finish has just been there for him and, he, and he's taken it. And Jake, maybe can you just talk about the opportunity when it's there of finishing those fights? You had a, you know, a big win in Ireland by knockout, uh, you know, knocking out Ryan Houston in, uh, in Vegas. And then your debut was unbelievable with a, with a big uh, head kick knockout over John Garcia. Maybe just talk a little bit up from your perspective on when that opportunity is there in season. Yeah, sure. I think what Chip said was spot on, though. Like, if it's there, it's there. And, and you take it, but like, I mean, I've spoken to knockout artists and they've said, you know, they're not necessarily like looking for the knockout all the time. If you're, if you're tense and looking for the knockout, you're not going to get the finish. The finish comes with a natural sense of it and setting it up. So like Chip was saying, when he was just attacking the guy's leg, methodically just picking him apart. And then he started seeing like, you know, this is where I could finish him potentially and just kept doing his thing and he's going to get finished. So like, I mean, my first fight with Lion Fight, uh, he came out with some heavy forward pressure. You know, I was just doing my thing, keeping my distance. And then uh, I just saw an opportunity, right? I think I wobbled him with a, a straight left and his hands were down by his hips and I kicked him in the head. Anybody's gonna do that, really. Um, it's when I think you're too tense and like, you know, too into it and not thinking that you miss that opportunity because you're just, you're not aware of the whole big picture. And then my second fight, obviously, I knew he was done. I just sense when people are done and if I sense when you're done. Like, to me, if you show me a hurt and I, I see that I've broken your spirit, I feel like the champion of the world and I'm just gonna, you, know, you can't stop me then. Same with the last fight. I kept going to his body all fight long. He came out hard and he had some good power, um, good boxing, and, uh, and we expected that. But I started going to his body and I just kept going to his body. And uh, I saw him start breaking down, little winces here and there. And then you just know it's over. And then he just took a couple, couple toe stabs. Doesn't matter how many abs you have with a toe stab. <laughs> Uh, and, and Joey, just sticking on that kind of knockout uh, theme for a minute, obviously you, you were very close to, to finishing Brent in, in your win and you took the title from him. Maybe for, for people that maybe don't quite know what that's like, can you just talk about a past knockout or, or that feeling when 
you have somebody on the ropes and you finish a fight like that? Can you just maybe talk about what what is just going through your mind and your body when you're just like, I, I'm going to finish this guy right now? When when you know he's hurt and you got to have the the knowledge whether to whether to back off or whether to empty the tank and finish him off, or sometimes you've hurt him to the head, so you go to the body to bring his hands down. I I definitely felt I had Brett hurt when 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 we fought. I broke my arm in the second round at That's the good. end of the second round, but I felt he was near he was near the end for sure. That right hand, right uppercut were finding him, and it was just a matter of time. And then he threw a spinning elbow at me, and I threw a spinning back fist and broke my arm. But I I felt it would. It, for that fight too, it was it was time. He was he was near the end, and uh, I couldn't do it with a broken arm. Like I, but it, was, it, it would have been would have been a huge arms. huge win to get a knockout. Okay, would have been huge to get a knockout there in lion fight. I, I was really hoping to, for, <laughs> you know, to make a statement on my first fight and stuff. But yeah, it is what it pretty, is. Pretty good. You made a pretty good statement too. I mean, Brett's like Chip said, he's incredibly tricky in the ring, and, and you know, as long, one of the longest serving champions, uh, you know, we've had one of the winningest fighters in line for history too. So, um, just pulling off that achievement even without a knockout was something pretty special. Thank you. Um, wanted to sort of wind, start winding things down with something a little fun. Um, everybody has a walkout song. They, they send in what walkout song they want. A little bit of a twist on it. If you could have one performer, band, singer, whatever, do it live. Do a live walkout for you. Jason, oh. who would be the live walkout performer that you would pick? Hold on, you're going to make this happen, Scott? Uh, well, if, if you're willing to help with the budget. Awesome strength. Uh, my, mine won't work. It's got to be uh, Michael Jackson. But... They have a hologram now. They do, yeah. Well, if you get me the hologram, I'd be up for that, Scott. Okay, so which Michael Jackson hologram song would you be walking out to? Oh, man. Maybe Thriller. I don't know. They're all good. Thriller, though. It gets me going. Like, it gets me my rhythm going. I play it every time before sparring. Everybody knows when Michael Jackson comes on, it's sparring time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chip, you've got uh, a band there ready to play you out to the ring for a title defense. Who's it going to be? Oh, man. I mean, if we're bringing people back from the grave, then I'll get uh, Notorious B.I.G. And uh, Another hologram. Actually, we, 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 I, he's done holograms. There's some holograms out there of him, so we could probably arrange that. The hologram of Tupac. I don't think they're doing a biggie. Okay. That was actually one of my favorite walkouts when, uh, when we went to London that time. And um, mm -hmm. I came out to Biggie Victory, and I took that, that walk down the aisle that they had set up and everything. That was uh, – that was a cool time, so I would like to, uh, I mean, shoot, if we can get a, somebody to reincarnate Biggie, that would be fantastic. Okay, Joey, same thing. You've got the opportunity to come in first title defense uh, for the North American title. Who is your live walkout performance? Uh, that, that, that's a tough one. Um, it's kind of funny because Chip comes out to the same song I do, Victory by <laughs> yeah. D.I.G. I always come out to that song, too. So I watched a couple of his fights, and I'm like, no shit, he's got the same, same, same walkout song as me. Um, that's a tough one. I'm gonna well, have to think. You know what? Then we just have you two guys fight sometime, maybe later this year or next year, and we just have one song, and uh, that's it. We both come out, and that's you know, that's the way it works. Walk out at the same time. Yeah, walk out. Just it, must, it must be a winning song, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so sticking with something else, a little fun too. Uh, Joey, start us off. Um, your favorite uh, pre-fight and favorite post-fight meal? Meal? Yeah. Uh, I'd say for pre-fight, um, I just do a, a big pasta dinner usually the night the night before. <laughs> I don't know if that's if that's good or what, but <laughs> well, it's working, uh, right? So. <laughs> after you know starving myself and having a crazy diet for so long, I'll get uh, spaghetti, some kind of spaghetti or pasta with meatballs. Not too many meatballs, but tons of water. And then I'd say post fight, I like uh, I like quite a few beers. 
I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually uh, I don't usually eat a, a ton when I'm done fighting. I like to drink a few beers. It takes the uh, adrenaline down, and well, I don't know if it takes the adrenaline down. It, it, it calms me down a bit, I guess. Did you bring some of that stronger Canadian beer down to your fight at Foxwoods? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's okay. You can just drink a few more. <laughs> it'll it'll do the same for you. All right, Jake. Uh, favorite uh, pre-fight, post-fight meal? Uh, pre-fight meal. I have my man, I'm really fortunate, I have uh, my man TJ, Coach TJ, he's a nutrition coach. He comes out and lives in the, in, the, in the hotel room with me and makes like just anything. Like you want like healthy pancakes, pasta, potato, any kind of meat, whatever you want. He makes it, scrambled eggs, I don't know. So he just, every time he's made something different, and it's just been great. So I just say Coach TJ. And then on uh, after the fight, I, I like uh, tacos or okay. pizza. I'm a big big pizza and taco guy. All right, Chip, how about for you? I mean, after the fight, we'll we'll get to that first uh, fight day. I usually go and I get my uh, like my pancake breakfast and whatnot. It's probably not the most healthy thing in the world, but I may wait. Like Joey said, you, you spend all this time on a diet and whatnot, which, I mean, I don't cut like a ton of weight, but I cut enough and I love eating. So it's like when I can't eat whatever I want, whenever I want it, it's like I'm, I'm lucky because I'm a pretty good cook myself. So I can kind of cook myself whatever I want and make it kind of healthy leading up to the fight. But once it's over, it's a wrap. I'll be getting everything, pizza, beers, tequila, burgers i mean like i said i got my barbecue business going over here right now so my ribs are looking fantastic but <laughs> that's yeah. where we were that's where we were going after the next fight we're going to chip's house that's uh, the, the next most fight meal <laughs> set up a smoker outside the venue i got you yeah we'll just we'll just park a motorhome out there or something with a smoker I mean, and hey. cables and there we go. i'll run out the um, ring run outside take some ribs off be good to go and guys, just, I mean, obviously during this pandemic, everybody's kind of, you know, situated at home. Um, is there a movie or, or TV show that has been your go-to, whether it's something from your favorite from the past or is there, or is there a new one? Uh, Jake, let's start with you, uh, your go-to show or movie right now. I just turned to my wife and asked her what we're watching because I forget. <laughs> <laughs> the Office. You've okay. seen The Office? Oh, man. That's hilarious. The, the American version. It's just great. Like, we turn on any episode and I end up dying, so straight away, it's brilliant. Okay, Chip, go to show or movie right now. I'm guessing something animated. Uh, uh, not really. Actually, right this second, what have I been watching? Oh, on Hulu, uh, an old show from years back. It's uh, The Musketeers, based on the Three Musketeers. So, yeah. I mean, everything, I, I, a lot of my shows, they got to have some kind of combat. And I like Vikings. Vikings is a great show. Spartacus is a great show. If there's swords and people like dueling and stuff like that, then count me in. Um, the other one that just started was uh, like what we do in the shadows, got vampires and stuff, but it's a comedy. It's hilarious. Um, but yeah, right now I've been watching uh, Musketeers and I've been playing, uh, playing a little video games too. A little Assassin's Creed. I mean, I'm, I always got to be killing something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and Joey, how about for you? Is there a go-to movie or show that you've been uh, binging on right now at all? Or? Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Joey. We're there. Sorry, I'm having some difficulties here. No, no problem. We got you. TV show I'm watching right now, uh, nothing really good. I've watched everything good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Vikings, then I was watching uh, the Knights Templars. I mean, now I'm watching National Geographic. <laughs> you know? You're running out I'm of not, stuff. Uh, what's that? You're running out of stuff. I'm running out of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Watch the office. Um, <laughs> some Hell on Wheels show, it's not very good, yeah. so it's kind of just like uh, sit down for 20 25 minutes before bed kind of thing, you know, wind down. But I've watched all the good shows. The Punisher, that was a good show. That was Somebody good. wanted it taken. That was or they took, 
Let me choose a good one. Yeah. Okay. That was a good show, eh? <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's kind of put a wrap on it. Uh, start with Chip. Uh, just maybe leave us with a couple thoughts on uh, the current situation, the pandemic situation, um, and uh, you, you know just your thoughts on that and, and your, um, your thoughts on, on what's you know, getting ready to be it, uh, on stage again for Lion Fight as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, I got it better than a lot of people. I mean, comfortable, got a roof over my head, got food, got my health. Um, but yeah, everybody should just use common sense, you know, not go out and, I mean, it's cold over here still, so nobody's going to be partying at the beach. But you see all these things like down in Florida, all these people flocking to the beach with all their friends and whatnot. And it's like, all right, come on. Like, even if you don't have anybody that you can get sick, might as well just, just you know, just save it for a little bit until this is all over and just kind of chill out, you know, find something to do at home, like work on a new hobby or do something productive, whatever. <laughs> Start smoking ribs or something, and <laughs> it all boils down to ribs right now, doesn't it? But um, but yeah, as far as like getting back to it, like I can't wait for this to be over, just like everybody else. Um, and hopefully I'll be back in that ring asap, asap. I've been been waiting. All right, Joey. Uh, kind of same thing for you. Uh, just maybe wrap things up with um, a couple thoughts on on the pandemic situation and also your desire and, and just getting ready to get back at it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's starting to peak around here where I am. And uh, I, I hope everybody uses common sense and keeps doing what they're doing because whatever we're doing is starting to work. So hopefully that works. We can get the border open again. We can get the fights going again. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of guys chomping at the bit to get back in the ring and fight. So um, I want to get in there. I know that. I want to fight uh, Chris Trammell. So, yeah. Okay. Awesome. And, and Jake, uh, same thing for you. Just uh, getting through this current situation and, and uh, your desire to get back out of the fight. Yeah, I think the common theme is uh, just using common sense and self-control. You know, wait till this all blows over. I don't know if it's going to blow over like that, but just wait till it dies down a little more. And, that. and yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. So you say the word, Scott, and uh, can't wait. So make sure you know I'm one of, I want to be one of the first to fight. Well, I appreciate all three of you guys. Uh, Jake Peacock, Joey George, Shipper as a caller. Thank you guys for taking, uh, you know, almost an hour out of your day here. I know everybody's got something going on, but we appreciate the time and, and as soon as possible, we, uh, I know everybody wants to see all three of you back in the ring uh, very soon. So thanks again for your time, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lion Fight. See you, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time on it. Take care. Bye. Bye.